Asystole is also known as flatline. It is a state of cardiac standstill with no cardiac output and no ventricular depolarization, as shown in the image below. It eventually occurs in all dying patients. Pulseless electrical activity, P, is the term applied to a heterogeneous group of dysrhythmias unaccompanied by a detectable pulse. Brady asystolic rhythms are slow rhythms. They can have a wide or narrow complex, with or without a pulse, and are often interspersed with periods of asystole. When discussing pulseless electrical activity, ventricular fibrillation, VF, and ventricular tachycardia, VT, are excluded. Asystole can be primary or secondary. Primary asystole occurs when the heart's electrical system intrinsically fails to generate a ventricular depolarization. This may result from ischemia or from degeneration of the sinoatrial SA, node or atrioventricular AV, conducting system. Primary asystole is usually preceded by a Brady dysrhythmia due to sinus node block arrest, complete heart block, or both. Reflex Brady asystole Asystole can result from ocular surgery, retrobulbar block, eye trauma, direct pressure on the globe, maxillofacial surgery, hypersensitive carotid sinus syndrome, or glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Episodes of asystole and bradycardia have been documented as manifestations of left temporal lobe complex partial seizures. These patients experienced either dizziness or syncope. No sudden deaths were reported but the possibility exists if asystole were to persist. The longest interval was 26 seconds. Secondary asystole occurs when factors outside of the heart's electrical conduction system result in a failure to generate any electrical depolarization. In this case, the final common pathway is usually severe tissue hypoxia with metabolic acidosis. Asystole or Brady asystole follows untreated ventricular fibrillation and commonly occurs after unsuccessful attempts at defibrillation. This forebodes a dismal outcome. Causes of primary and secondary asystole are briefly reviewed in this section. Primary asystole. Primary asystole develops when cellular metabolic functions are no longer intact and an electrical impulse cannot be generated. With severe ischemia, Pacemaker cells cannot transport the ions necessary to affect the transmembrane action potential. Implantable pacemaker failure may also be a cause of primary asystole. Proximal occlusion of the right coronary artery can cause ischemia or infarction of both the sinoatrial SA, and the atrioventricular AV, nodes. Extensive infarction can cause bilateral bundle branch block. Idiopathic degeneration of the SA or AV node can result in sinus arrest block and or AV heart block, respectively. This process is slow and progressive, but the symptoms may be acute and asystole may result. An implantable pacemaker is usually required for these conditions. Occasionally, asystolic sudden death occurs from congenital heart block, local tumor, or cardiac trauma. Asystole can occur following an indirect lightning strike, i.e., direct current, DC, that depolarizes all the cardiac pacemakers. A rhythm may return spontaneously or shortly after cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, is initiated. These patients may survive intact if given immediate attention. Alternating current, AC, from man-made sources of electrical current usually results in ventricular fibrillation, VF. Secondary asystole. Examples of common conditions that can result in secondary asystole include suffocation, near drowning, stroke, massive pulmonary embolus, hyperkalemia, hypothermia, myocardial infarction, ME, complicated by VF or ventricular tachycardia, VT, that deteriorates to asystole, post defibrillation, and sedative hypnotic or narcotic overdoses leading to respiratory failure. Hypothermia is a special circumstance, because asystole can be tolerated for a longer period under such conditions and can be reversed with rapid rewarming while CPR is being performed. If available, institute cardiopulmonary bypass immediately, because it can accomplish both of these goals. Most survivors have received cardiopulmonary bypass. The prognosis in asystole depends on the etiology of the asystolic rhythm, 
timing of interventions, and success or failure of advanced cardiac life support, ACLS. Resuscitation is likely to be successful only if it is secondary to an event that can be corrected immediately, such as a cardiac arrest due to choking on food, a cafe coronary, and only if an airway can be established and the patient can be rapidly reoxygenated. Occasionally, primary asystole can be reversed if it is due to pacemaker failure, which could be either intrinsic or extrinsic, and this is corrected immediately by external pacing. Generally, the prognosis is dismal regardless of its initial cause. In particular, individuals with post-countershock asystole have an even worse survival rate. In the termination of resuscitation study, when no shock was advised in patients with unwitnessed cardiac arrest, there were no survivors. In the Göteborg, Sweden, study, 10% of 1,635 asystolic patients survived to hospital admission, but 2% survived to hospital discharge. The most recent American Heart Association guidelines to improve cardiocerebral resuscitation, CCR, have validated studies that show improved outcomes in all adults with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest in ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation only. Complications Complications from asystole include permanent neurologic impairment and complications from cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, or invasive procedures, e.g., liver laceration, fractured ribs, pneumothorax, hemothorax, air embolus, aspiration, gastric, esophageal rupture. If asystole persists for 15 minutes or more, the brain will have been deprived of oxygen long enough to cause brain death. Death often occurs.